Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. Today, I am teaching on a very important subject. And the title is The Boldness of Faith. In other words, fighting the good fight of faith. What does it mean by fight the good fight of faith? Who is the enemy? What weaponry do we have to execute this fight so that we are always victorious in the name of Jesus Christ? But before we continue, let's have a word of prayer. My Father God, we all agree today as starting this. I am praying for your utterance to speak to your people today as your own oracle, that you will make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. Father God, I am praying for the anointing of your spirit for this teaching today. Anointing that is already in us. Anointing that will teach us, guide us, enlighten us. Reveal the truth of your word to us today. Dear Spirit of God, you are the greatest teacher. I am just a vessel. I pray that you will lead us into all the truth today. You will open the eyes, the ears, the heart of each and everyone listening today, wherever they are listening from. Minister to them simultaneously. Give them what you want them to receive from today's teaching. Let the glorious light of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ shine in our path today. Show us what is God and what is not God. As we glean from the word of God today, we ask you, Spirit of God, that you will help us put them into practice so that we be doers of the word of God and not only hearers only. My precious Father God, I thank you because through the power of the Holy Ghost and through your word, we are able to fight the good fight of faith. I thank you because in the name of Jesus Christ, now we have authority over devil and his demons. In all of this, I take no glory, but I give you all the glory, all the honor in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everyone said, Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My good friends, I welcome you today for another teaching, a very important teaching in Christianity, very, very important. And like I said earlier, the title is The Boldness of Faith, or you can say The Good Fight of Faith, or you can say Spiritual Warfare. So many times we hear about all of these things, but we don't exactly know what they mean, or sometimes we understand them differently. But today we're going to go to the word of God so that we can rightfully divide the word of truth. We can know exactly who the enemy is, what is the fight of faith. And not only that, what weaponry is available to us to execute this fight. Before we continue, let me read you a text quickly uh, on Romans chapter 10, verse 2, all the way to verse 4. Paul writing he says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of the righteousness of God and going about establishing their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So he's talking about the ignorance here, ignorance of the word of God. In summary, he's talking about Israel, how they have gone about their own ways, how they have forsaken their true word of God. And now they're going about things that they came up with, their missioner. You know, Rabbi Akiba, he said in one of the Talmuds, he said um, um, uh, in the in the one of the in the literature of uh, Israel, the Mishnah. He said that um, the, the 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 this this laws, the Mishnah itself, the 
written oral laws. He says they were there. The purpose of this is to build a fence around the word of God so that people don't even get close to breaking the commandment of God. Do you see the idea here? But you see, in the process of them building a wall around the word of God, they have broken the word of God. So ignorance of the word of God is not an excuse. Bible wants us to search the scriptures to rightfully divide the word of truth. If we don't do it, then it's very easy for us to be deceived. So that is why you can have a, a zeal, but without knowledge. You can be fully interested, but because you don't know, or you are going about it in the wrong way, you will be deceived. That something has been in existence for a long time doesn't make it right. We cannot build ourselves based on religious traditions. The things that human beings came up with. And then we forsake the word of God. For Jesus Christ said, he said, you err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And this time of ignorance, in this time of ignorance, God weaked at. But now command that everyone everywhere, all men everywhere should repent. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17 verse 30. Jesus Christ talking to the uh, uh, Jewish people of his own day says, The word of God is made of no effect because of your traditions. So we cannot remain in ignorance. That is why we have to know what the word of God says so we can take full advantage of what the word of God says. And that is the purpose of today's teaching. So the question is this. What does the Bible say about fighting the good fight of faith? What does it say about spiritual warfare? Who is the enemy? What weapons do we have available to execute this uh, war against the enemy? This is what we're going to be talking about today. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is it? What is the fight of faith? Now, because the only fight, are you hearing me, my friends? The only fight that Christians are called to fight is the fight of faith. And it is called a good fight of faith. Why? Because you know the result, the outcome. You know what it's going to be. It's going to be victory. Because we fight this fight in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what it is not. So that you don't understand, misunderstand this teaching. It is not a physical fight. It is not a fight of the fist. It's not a fight of energy. It is not a fight of yelling and screaming and shouting at Satan, trying to make him to stop doing something or to go away. It's none of this. Rather, it is a spiritual fight. And I'm going to explain to you what this fight is. It is exactly to fight a good fight of faith is using the word of God. The word of God. Are you hearing me, my friends? Using the word of God against the lies, the manipulations, the deceptions, the wives, the, the, the trickery of Satan and his mysteries. Trying to sway us away from the word of God, from what we believe or from what we are about to believe. Let me say it again so that it's very clear. When we say fight the good fight of faith, it means using the word of God against Satan and his mysteries, his deceptions, his lies, his trickery. The things that he's doing, the thoughts that he's bringing to our mind, his imaginations, using the word of God against these things so that they don't prevail. 
So that they don't stop us from taking the full benefit of what the word of God says. Or they don't make us lose faith. So that we are not deceived because of these tactics of the enemy. That is what it means by fighting the good fight of faith. So it is a, it, it is a fight of the word of God. I'm going to read to you now, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, all the way to 5, so that you know where we're getting these things from, because they're all in the Bible. So, let me give you where this, let me give you the reference again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 to 5, so that you will understand exactly what I'm saying. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me break it down so that we can get a, a, a hold of what he's saying here. He says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. He's saying, even though we live in this world, remember, once you are in this world, you cannot have a life that is free from persecution, if you're a Christian, from temptation, from all kinds of problems. No, they will come to you. But the good news is that you will prevail over them. That's why we fight the good fight of faith. So he says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. But the weapons of our warfare are carnal. He said they are not carnal. I'm sorry. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So he's telling you that the weapons we have, he says they are not carnal. They are not fist. Physical. They are not yelling and shouting. And screaming at Satan. He says, but they are mighty through God. Which means they are from God. And these weapons, remember, I'm going to, I'm going to take you to that place when we discuss about the weapon that we have available to fight against Satan. But we are not at that point. This, we're not at that point yet. So we're going to hold on to what these weapons are. We're going to visit that part later on in this teaching. But now he's going to let you in on what we are fighting. Remember, I said the only call that Christians are, the only fight Christians are called to fight is the good fight of faith. So what are we fighting against? Like I said earlier, he's going to list them now. He says, there are mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds. And he's going to tell you what the strongholds are right now. Casting down imagination is number one of them. Imagination. What is imagination? There are pictures that are painted in your mind. Because of what you have seen. Or because of what you heard. There are pictures that the enemy will paint, will paint in your mind. And the purpose of this picture is to get you to Think about them. You begin to meditate on these pictures. And the moment you begin to do that, you begin to give it life and strength. And it will get bigger and bigger to the place that it will challenge your faith. And it will even take over you, your thoughts, or your mind completely. So he says, casting down imagination. Imagination is, is one of them. He says, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. So what are the high things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God? Like I said earlier, the wise of Satan. His lies, his trickeries, his thoughts, his ideas. The things that he has, he's put in our mind. Remember, the mind is the battleground. You're going to win in the mind. Or you're going to lose it in the mind. That's where the battle starts. And that's why he's going to whisper to your spiritual ears. 
those thoughts, those ideas, those imaginations. He would like to bring those things to you just to get you involved in them. And if you don't stop, if you don't cast them down, that's what the Bible says here. It says casting down imaginations. If you don't cast them down and you begin to meditate on them, feed on them, you begin to give them life, they will grow out of proportion to an extent that you probably cannot be able to handle it anymore. So these things are the problems. These are the things that we are fighting against. So what do I say? I said we will we use the word of God against these problems that we we have listed now. Now we have identified that the fight of faith is using the word of God to cast down imaginations, ideas, wise of the Satan, his deceptions, his trickeries, the things that he's doing, the thoughts that he's bringing to our minds. Using the word of God to cast them down and bring them to naught. So that they don't deceive us or put us in the place where we doubt our faith. Or in the place of weakness or unbelief. Now, remember that once you were born again, you become Satan enemy. Why? Because you defected. So he's going to do anything possible. Trying to get you down or get you out of this place. Because he knows he lost you. So because he does that, the Bible says we are not ignorant of his uh, devices. We got to know the enemy we are dealing with. How he operates. His modus operandi. So that we are able to follow up with him. We are able to put him in the place where he belongs. Remember, when we when I say put him in the place where he belongs, it is not by might, not by power. It is by the Spirit of God. This race is not to the swift. Neither is this battle to the strong. It is God who is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And because of this, we can do all things through Christ Jesus Christ who is in us. So I do not boast on my own accord or my own ability. But I boast in that one that is dwell, that dwells in me. And his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth by his spirit. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ fought this good fight of faith. Remember that that test, fight the good fight of faith, we find that in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, where you are also called, and have professed a good profession before so many witnesses. That word profess there can also be translated as confess. So you can see the connection between fighting the good fight of faith and uh, confessing words. What is the meaning of confession? Confession means saying the same thing in consent. Which means... If the word of God says, I am blessed, you ought to be bold and say, I am blessed in the name of Jesus. If the word of God says, by his stripes, I am healed. You got to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. So we say the same thing the word of God says. So now you can see the connection between fighting the good fight of faith and uh, confession. So it is a fight of mouth. Confession, speaking the word of God in consent. If you read further, you will see, if you read further, verse 13, it tells you about what Jesus Christ did. He demonstrated a good example of confession of words. Remember when they took him to Pontius Pilate? And Pontius Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He says, my kingdom is not of this world. If it was, my servants will fight for me. And he asked him again, so are you the king of the Jews? And he says, for this purpose, I was born. So Jesus Christ here, fighting the good fight of faith before Pontius Pilate, demonstrated it through words. Words. It wasn't a fist fighting. 
No, he wasn't just jumping up in front of Pontius Pilate and say, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to, I'm going to punch you out. <laughs> no, he wasn't doing any of that. What did he do? He used words. He used words. In Revelation, we are told that out of the mouth of Jesus Christ proceeded a two-edged sword out of his mouth. And remember the battle of uh, Amagedon, which will, uh, in the valley of Amagedon, in the plain of Megiddo. When the nations of the earth, Bible tells us, will gather against Jerusalem, trying to destroy Jerusalem. And all of the sudden, Jesus Christ will appear in his own white horse, with his angels, with us together, us together with him. And he says, out of his mouth will proceed a two-edged sword. Sharp sword that would destroy them. So it wasn't going to be a fixed fight or a physical fight. No. His words would destroy every one of them. And the Bible tells us that the blood, oh, the blood will go like miles away. The blood from that destruction. So Jesus Christ also demonstrated this. He remember, you remember his uh, temptation at the, uh, 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 by, by, by Satan. In the wilderness, after he fasted for 40 days, Satan came against him, trying to make him turn the stones into bread, to jump from the mountain top, from the temple top. He showed him the glory of the world and asked him to worship him. But remember what Jesus Christ did. He wasn't fighting Satan and was using his hands and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight you right now. If you don't get out of here now, I'm gonna punch your lights out. No, the safety of the world didn't do that. Rather, he said, it is written. <laughs> it is written. You see, when we engage in uh, spiritual warfare, we're not supposed to be tired. No, because it's not a physical fight. Is a fight of the word of God, using the word of God against the enemy. So it's not like we're going to be punching. You see, we're not supposed to engage ourselves like Paul says, he doesn't engage himself in punching the air or running in a circle. No, he doesn't. What he says, and he says, when I land my punch, when I land them, I hit something. When I go, I go places. I don't run in a circle. I don't run in a circle without getting to a destination. He's telling you about how to fight the good fight of faith. It's going to be your words. No shadow boxing. You want to hit the target right there at the spot. You don't want to be running in a circle without getting to a destination. You want to, when you take off, you get to your destination. Baruch Hashem Hadonai. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what he's talking about. Fighting the good fight of faith. Now, I'm going to talk about who is the enemy here. So that you know the credential of the one that you are dealing with. His resume. Because we are not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. So that he doesn't take advantage over us or we are not taken on our ways. But we got to know who he is. How he operates. His modus operandi. So that we will always put him in the place where he belongs. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, remember that Satan is a created being. He was created as Lucifer, which means the light bearer. The one that covers. And until iniquity was found in him, he was cast out of heaven as a resident. Even though he still has access to heaven, but he's no longer a resident there. He was cast out. Because he was puffed off in pride. I will ascend to the north. I will be like the most high God. And God told him that then you will be cast down. Into the earth. And that's what God did. So who is this enemy we're talking about here? The Bible tells us that he is the accuser of the brethren. In Revelation. The one who stands before the Lord accusing you day and night in the presence of the Almighty God. That is this guy we are talking about. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, He is the God of this word. If you are still not a Christian, a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He is still your Lord, your God of this word. Remember, even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. Jesus Christ praying to the Father, He said, Father, I'm not telling you to take them out of this world, but to keep them from the evil one. So if you're not born again, Satan is who? Your God. We have only two families. Two families. The family of God Almighty and family of Satan. There are no middle grounds. That would be deception. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, the Bible calls him the one that deceives the whole world. Look at what he does. Deception. There is no power. He, he got none. He used to for Christians, but not anymore. So he functions through deception now. And the Bible says he deceived the whole world. Even those that you think that they, they, they are very strong. He, the, the guy knows how to deceive them and cause them to fall. From their faith. In John chapter 8 verse 44. The Bible says he is the father of lies. When he speaks. He speaks of his own. No truth is found in him. None at all. No truth. He started lying from the beginning. He's still lying up to this present day. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, the Bible tells us that he has the ability to transform himself into angel of light. So if you're expecting to see someone dressed in a red suit with horns and the pitchfork in his hand, and he will arrive and say, Hey, the kiss of the brethren is here. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> You're going to be missing him. He said that he transformed himself into angel of light, which means he takes that which is true and he will pervert it a little bit so that you are deceived. He comes in like, like the light. So if you are not sharp with the word of God, you will be deceived easily. That is why you see so many people in the church who are deceived, even in pulpits, angels of darkness turn into angels of light. So, therefore, his emissaries, his demons, his evil spirits will be manifesting themselves as the ministers of light. Thereby, so many people are deceived. Because they will say, but we had him, he spoke the word of God. He quoted some scriptures. No, 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 don't be deceived. Not everyone that speaks the word of God or quote the scripture is a Christian. That's why you're going to rightfully divide the word of truth. You're going to judge them by their fruit. And see what kind of pop, what kind of person, what kind of people they are. Now, in John chapter ten verse ten, the Bible tells us that he comes, he steals, he kills, he destroys. Whenever he shows up, this is one of the things he wants to do. He wants to steal from you, kills, and destroys. Now, let me point this out to you. It probably is not a part of the day's teaching. But remember that Satan has no power over you. Are you hearing me, my friends? He has no power over you. If he does have power over you, he's the one that you yield to him. Jesus Christ spoiled principalities and powers and made a public show of them. And he gave you authority over them. In Mark 16, 17. These signs have followed them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. When he rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples and said, Hell, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. So when he, when he said, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me, but he turned around and delegated the authority to you as a child of God. He is a head and we are the body. So he has no authority over you. Remember, if he does, he will eliminate you right away. 
So all he operates upon is deception, lies. He's trying to trick you into you destroying yourself by his lies, his thoughts, his ideas, his imaginations. He bombards you with this every day, day and night. Because he's a tenacious rascal, he doesn't give up. A sorry cost entity. So you, that's why you got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to know that the enemy you are dealing with is real. As a matter of fact, he wants you to believe that he does not exist. That's what he wants you to do. So in that way, he also wants you to believe that God is 100% sovereignly in control of everything that happens. He doesn't want you to believe that you are a free moral agent and you can make your own choices and decisions so that he can go about on rampage doing destructions so that you can say, God allow this. It is from God. God knows why. And the guy is doing all this stuff. And he has succeeded in doing this to so many people, even Christians. If you will allow him. The only power he got is the one that you yield to him. So when I give you all this resume and all these references, it's not for you to be scared about him. I'm just telling you what the Bible says about him because you can be aware. Now, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, The whole world lies under the control of this evil one. Under his control, the whole world lies. If you will let him, you'll be one of those who will lie under his own control. If you don't understand your own authority, this authority we speak about, the authority of the believer, which is from Jesus Christ, you will be one of those who will be under his territory, under his control, under his manipulations. But blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know his end. Are you hearing me now? Revelation tells us how he's going to end up. That angel will come and bind him and put him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And after he's released for the moment, his last destination is going to be that lake burning with fire and brimstone. Are you not going to be excited when you see that happening? It will happen because the Bible doesn't lie. That is the purpose of prophecy. God telling us the things that are ahead of time. Because he knows the end from the beginning, but he gives us the end. He gives us the clue, ideas of those things that are yet to come in prophecies so that we can know. And he gave this one to John the Apostle, telling us how the end of this tenacious rascal is going to be. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am getting so excited now. So much excited, my friends. Now, now, I am going to change gears now. Gears. I'm going to change gears now. Now, we, are you going, to, you going to put on your seatbelt? Every time, sometimes, not every time, sometimes Christians, anything that happens, they will say, it is Satan. It is Satan. It is Satan. No, Satan is not responsible for everything. Are you hearing me, my friends? He's not responsible for everything. That is what the Bible talks about, the works of the flesh. The work of the flesh. Remember your old nature, your old you, before you got born again? That one that was alienated from God, separated from God, was in darkness before it was called unto light? That old you, that sinful nature of you, that was recreated, still had some mannerisms that is still inside there. That if you let it, you will do anything that you will let it to do. If you permit the flesh, the flesh can do anything that you permit it to do. As long as we are in this world, you and I, as long as we are in this world, we will have to deal with this flesh. It cannot go away. Unless when you are raptured or you go to heaven by death, your flesh will remain there. 
Remember, I'm talking about the old mannerisms of the old you. The behaviors that he was used to before he got born again. That is the flesh. And not everything that happens is Satan. He will say somebody will sneeze. I, I bind that sneezing in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, spirit of gluttony, spirit of smoking, spirit of addiction, oh, spirit of lust, I bind you. Oh, spirit of, of, of anger, spirit of malice, spirit of contention, oh, spirit of pride, oh, spirit of... Come on, Satan is not everything. Don't give him that so much credit. There are some things we do and we... We will give him credit for it. And he will sit down and laugh and say, I don't even think about this. They came up with this. So he's not everything. He remember he's not omnipresent. He's not everywhere. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. So he operates to his um, angelic beings, his demonic beings, through his... Uh, principalities and his powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age and through his spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. That's how he oppress through. He is only one entity himself. He's not everywhere and all the time. He doesn't know everything. So when we fail to understand that that is a work of the flesh that we got to deal with, when we fail to understand that, then we, we miss out on so many things. So now, I'm going to take you to the scriptures so that we can see what the Bible says about the work of the flesh. And you'll be surprised to know the things that the Bible calls the work of the flesh. He listed so many of them. You'll be so surprised. He calls them the work of the flesh, which means the old you. That if you give it that opportunity or freedom, it will do these things that we're going to read right now. Which means it's in your ability to suppress them, to put them down into subjection, cast down. So please go with me in Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to read verse 16 all the way to verse 21. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, all the way to 21. Let's see what the word of God says, my friends. It is beautiful to read the word of God. So Galatians 5, 15, all the way to 21. 16, so I read. Let us read the NLT translation. It's easier to understand for this purpose. Verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Are you hearing that? It says your sinful nature. The old you. It says the things that it, it, it craves. How does it get the craving? Before you were born again, those things were there. So it tries to crave for them again. Verse 17. The sinful nature wants to do evil. Which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. So he's telling you now, once you are born again, your new you, the one recreated in true righteousness, in the, in the nature of God is there. The spirit of God moves in, becomes one with your spirit. But the old nature the, it, and its mannerism is still there, trying to surface. So it's constantly battling with the spirit. Two of them, these two forces are at war, constantly with each other. Verse 18 says, But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the laws of Moses. Verse 19. When you allow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. He's telling you now the nature, those flesh, the work of the flesh. is going to tell you what the results are. He says when you allow, which means it is under your control to allow this or not. And it leads them, number one, sexual immorality. 
in purity, lustful pleasures. So he's telling you, somebody will come up and say, I bind the spirit of lust. But he's telling you here is a work of the flesh. It's not a demon. I bind the spirit of, of, of pornography. He's telling you here, it is what? Lust of the flesh. So we try to separate the things that are, so we don't say everything is certain. So you got to know your own responsibility as well. The Bible tells us. And the list continues. It says idolatry. You see? Sorcery. Hostility. Quarreling. Jealousy. Outbursts of anger. Selfish ambition. Dissension and division. Are you hearing? The, do you hear the list, my friends? And remember, some of these ones here, we will say, uh, uh, they are bigger than the other ones. No, in the sight of God, to miss the mark means to miss the mark. Sin is sin. So, 21 continues with the list of them. Envy. Are you hearing that? Drunkenness. Wild parties. <laughs> the other saints like this, let me tell you again. As I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you see all the things that are listed here, but remember that it says that um, software. This this is the way you were when before you got born again. But because you got born again, doesn't mean that these desires and these cravings go, went away. They're still there. But you got to know that this is the work of the flesh. That you got your own part to play. That Satan is not everything. Are you hearing me, my friend? Now, what are you going to do about it? Galatians 5.24. In Galatians 5.24, it says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and loves. So he says, if you belong to Christ, you have crucified the flesh. You crucify the flesh when you got born again. It is a continuous thing that you got to crucify the flesh with affections, the affections of the flesh and the lust of the flesh. This is the solution. And we're going to continue with the solution here. He says, you crucify. It doesn't say you cast out. It is something that involves your own participation, your own resistance. It doesn't say cast out this lust and these uh, affections of their own nature. No. Say crucify them. Bring them to naught. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Now let me let, let's read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Ephesians 4, 24. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and uh, true holiness. He wants you to put on that new man. The one that you got that day which, when you got born again. And he's telling you that you are the one to put it on every day. He says, after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. It is your own duty, my friends. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, Paul says, I put my body under and I bring it into subjection. You are the one to put this body under and bring it into subjection. Don't say certain this, certain that. He's not everything. As a Christian, you got your own part to play. So remember that when we allow the works of the flesh to take place, we intensify the spiritual warfare. We make it hard on ourselves. When we allow this work of the flesh to take place in us. When we don't resist them. When we don't put them under subjection. It is the re end result is there. We intensify the fight of the, 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 the fight. The fight of faith. We intensify this fight. Now, in Romans chapter 8 verse 13. Romans chapter 8 verse 13. For if we live after the flesh, 
we shall die. But if we, through the Spirit, do modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Through the Holy Ghost, if you modify the deeds of the body, which means the Spirit of God, remember, is already in you. By the help of the Holy Spirit, you can modify the deeds of the flesh. When these temptations come, when they try to surround themselves with uh, around you, pray in the Holy Ghost. Ask God, Father God, I receive grace to overcome this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive strength from the power within you. He says through the Spirit of God, you can modify this. And what is the Spirit of God? He is in you, one with you. Those that are joined with the Lord are one spirit with him. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He has come to lead you into all the truths. To show you the things yet to come. To bring to your memory the things spoken to you in the word of God. He is right here. Out of his belly shall flow the rivers of living waters. So you, 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 you pray in the Holy Ghost. Draw strength from within. And when you have done that, my friend... Flee temptation. Flee. The Bible tells us to flee temptation. Don't, don't stand there on your own abilities and say, I'm going to overcome it. Flee temptation. Joseph did with Potiphar's wife. The Bible tells us. He did. Now, if you have been tempted with alcohol, drinking too much, you don't go to a bar and sit down and say, I'm going to go there and just order a bottle of Coke. <laughs> Can you see the temptation there? But I will say, flee temptation. Don't do that. If you have been tempted with pornography and all that kind of stuff, don't say, don't, don't log into that computer and say, I, I'm just going to see what the headline says. Because it starts from one step to another. By the time you know it, you're overtaken in a fall. Flee temptation, my friends, the Bible is telling us. There are places that you're not supposed to be. Remember, temptation is not a sin. No. Jesus Christ was tempted in all points, just like we are, but without sin. Sin, it becomes a sin when you yield to that temptation. That's when it becomes a sin. So when the, 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 when the activities of the flesh is creeping in, He's trying to take an open hand. He's arising. Holy, what you got to do? Put it into subjection. Flee temptation if it's the case. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And replace those activities with something else. Instead of you going to that bar to order that bottle of Coke. Go to somewhere and engage yourself somewhere that you will not be tempted. A place that will produce something positive. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever. Oh, glory to God. Blessed be his holy name. My friends, we are getting into the big part of this teaching. Which means the weapons. The weaponry that we have available to us to execute this fight. The fight of faith. Remember, I said earlier that we have weapons. Because he says, for, he says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What are these weapons he's talking about here? The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. We're going to talk about those weapons right now. The weapons, remember, the good fight of faith, I said, is using the word of God to stand against the wives, the deceptions, the lies, the trickery, the thoughts, the ideas, the imaginations of Satan. Trying to bring that he brings to us to sway us away from our faith, to make us to stumble and fall, to deceive us, to weaken our faith. This is the weapon we're talking about now. So we're going to talk about these weapons right now. And we're going to go on in, in there. Remember the enemy, he packaged these things in different packages. His lies and his deceptions. He, he, he put them in different packages. And the same way, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God will give us different packages for his own packages. <laughs> will give us the solution to his own packages. Now, let's go into it, my friends. 
And it, I would like you again to open your Bible and go to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read 10 to 17. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 17. If you would go there, it would be so great. So we go to Ephesians. I said Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read from 10 all the way to 16. And you will see um, the weapon uh, that is available for us. These weapons, I call them, to execute this fight. Remember, your enemy is not human beings. They are not your enemy. Your enemy is a spirit that they are yielding to. The influences, this, that is your enemy. Human beings are not. You don't fight human beings. Please don't. The purpose of this teaching is not for you to fight human beings. We don't fight human beings. We fight the influences, the spirit they are yielding to. If they are coming up against us, or if these spirits are coming directly to us or through people, that's when we deal with them. And we don't deal with them with physical fight. We don't deal with them with yelling and screaming and shouting. We deal with them with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, verse 10. Galatians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Let's read the NLT again. NLT version. A final word. Paul is saying now. He said a final word. Or he would say, in summary. Or brethren. He said, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. He doesn't tell you to be strong in yourself. In yourself, you couldn't execute this fight. Remember, you are not a match to Satan by yourself. But in the name of Jesus and the power that he has given to you, you whip him every time. Don't forget that part is in the name of Jesus, not in your own ability. It is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs, but of God that shows mercy. Verse 11 Put on the, put, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Are you hearing that? It says put on the armor, put on the armor of God that you will be able to stand against all the strategies of the enemy. So it's telling you here what you're going to stand against. He doesn't tell you to stand against the power of Satan because he doesn't have any. That's why the Bible doesn't say power here. He says his strategies, his wiles. His deceptions, his ideas, his suggestions, his thoughts. That's what he's talking about here. So he says, with the armor of God that you're going to put on, which is going to list them in a moment, he says you're going to stand against all of these uh, trickeries. Verse 12, he says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies. Are you hearing that? Just what I said a minute ago. We don't fight against human beings. Flesh and blood, they are not your problem. Your problem is the influences. The spirit that is working through them against you. This is where the problem lies. It's spiritual, not physical. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. The things that you don't see. Against mighty powers in, the, in this dark world. Against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So it gives you here the categories of uh, demons. And it gives, it gives it to you in the order of their authority. The first one he listed here is evil rulers. And the authorities of the unseen world. And in King James Version it says we wrestle against principalities and powers. So principalities are the lowest of them all. These ones don't have a mind of their own. They are told what to do. Followed by powers. And then followed by the rulers of the darkness of this world. The rulers of the darkness of this world are those demons that go and, and control. They control those pe people who are not born again. These are the influences we're talking about here. And then we have the last one, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. This was a stage in the second heaven. That's where they operate from. 
So he gives you the categories here and the authorities in the level from, from, from the lowest one to the highest one. So he's telling you here, these are the things we are fighting against. So they are not seen forces. You can see them. That's why you cannot fight them physically. You got to use the word of God, which is the spirit and that double edged sword, which can pierce them in any direction. Verse 13 says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in that in the time of evil. Put on your own armor and we're going to lose them very soon. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. You will not be overcome. You will stand bold after the battle. Every time it happens, you will come out as a victor. Remember, they will come to you. You are in this world. They will come to you. But the, the good news is that you will always come out victorious. That's what the Bible is saying here. And then it says in verse 14, it says, stand your ground. Are you hearing me, my friend? Put on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Now, it's beginning to give you the armor here. So I'm going to read it all and then I will take them one after the other. And then I will break them down to you. So we're going to read it all now and then I will take them one after the other and then I will break it down for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said, stand your ground, verse 14, put it on the belt of the of truth and of the body armor of God's righteousness for shoes. Put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. 16, he says, in addition to all this, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fairy arrows of the devil. The shield of faith is one of them. And then in 17, it says, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is the offensive one. All other ones we've read are defensive weapons. But this one is offensive, the word of God. And in verse 18, it says, okay, we, we stop in 17. So now I've given you all of this and... Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take them one after the other and then we're going to go through them so that you understand what, how to use this weapon and what they are. So the first one is going by King James Version. He says, your law is got about with the truth. Which means you got to know the truth, the word of God. You got to know the key principle to be successful in, 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 in spiritual warfare or in good fight of faith is good knowledge of the word of God. You got to know it. That's why we got to put our nose in the word of God and know what the Bible says. So he says, with your, see your law is God, about with the truth. You got to know what the truth, what, 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 what uh, you got to know what the word of God says. So that you will be able to dictate the lies of the enemy. When it comes to you with the things that look like lies, Remember what we say that he has the ability to transform himself into angel of light. So when he wants to pervert the truth, the truth, word of God, you gotta be, you, you, you cut it right there. He said, Oh no, that's not what the Bible says. Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So when you know the true word of God, what the word of God says, it becomes a difficult task with him to be, he cannot waste things around and make them look like they are the truth. When he does that, you were able to detect them and said, no, I will not fall for this lie. That's not what the word of God says. The second weapon he talks about here is breastplate of righteousness. What is the breastplate of righteousness? Remember I told you that this enemy, this evil one, he has different packages for his lives. And everyone he brings about the Bible has answer for them. So now this is the lie that he's going to bring to you that you are not righteousness of God. Which means you are not the righteousness of God. He will tell you. He will tell you, try to bring condemnation because of what happened in your life. He said, he will tell you, if you are the righteousness of God, how could you have said what you said yesterday to that brother? 
How could you have done what you did yesterday or the other day? You are not the righteousness of God. So it is you then, that because you know the truth, you know that you are the righteousness of God, you will stand bold and say, for he has made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that will be made the righteousness of God? I am the righteousness of God. Remember the Bible says, if our heart condemns us, he says, God is greater, bigger than our hearts. He knows everything. But if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence towards God. So if he condemns you saying that you are not the righteousness of God and you let that come into you, it will weaken your faith. It will paralyze your faith because you won't have any boldness, any confidence in God anymore because you will let your heart condemn you. So when he brings that lies package that you are not the righteousness of God, you're going to stand bold with the word of God. Yes, I am. I am not, Jesus Christ is made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Blessed be his holy name. And he's going to take off because the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. He says, give no place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. And he says, whom goes about, roaming like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. But he says, Resist him in your own steadfastness. You gotta resist him with the word of God. And he got no choice but to flee. Flee is for one to run like in terror. That's what it means to flee. The third weapon we got is there, the shod with our feet. Shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He will bring another package of lies to you. Says there is no peace between you and God. There is no peace between man and God. Adam broke that peace. You don't have any peace between God and man. It's war. It's destruction. That's what you're going to get. But you're going to stand bold and say, The word of God made it known to me, makes it known to me that a peace is now between God and man because of what Jesus Christ did. The angel showed up at his butt and said, Peace to the earth, to the world. I have peace now. There is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So there is peace between me and my God because of what Jesus Christ did. And I have received that. So I have peace with God. And I'm going to go around now and tell other people about this peace that God has established between us and him through our Lord Jesus Christ so that they can get in on this peace. Are you hearing me? Now another, another weapon we got is the shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? Shield of faith, remember faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Many a time the enemy will come trying to bring it to your thought. Remember I say the battle is in the mind. You're going to win it there or you're going to lose it there. The enemy will start his attack with his whispering in your spiritual ears, ideas, thoughts, suggestions. So he's going to tell you about things that you've been believing for that they're not going to come to pass. Then how you think you're going to get that? It's not going to happen. Sometimes you will see physical signs that will that, that, that insinuate these things are not going to come to pass. You will get the feelings. They're not going to pass. They're not going to come to pass. But it says the shield of faith, you're going to stand in what the word of God says. You're going to say, I walk by faith, not by sight. The righteous shall live by faith. I am not moved by what I see or what I hear or how I feel. But I am moved by what the word of God says. This is what the word of God says. And this is what I am going to believe. I am going to stand to the end. And remember friends, if you are willing to stand forever, you are not going to be standing forever. You are not going to be standing too long. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're going to have the word of God to be able to stand against every contraindication, every contrary thing that is not the word of God. No matter how it, they appear to you, but in physical sight, on hearing, on feeling, stand in the word of God, the word of truth. 
He will never fail you because the word of God will always endure forever. Remember, the heavens and earth will pass away. His word will not. For he has upheld his word above all other names. Every name he got in the word of God, he says his word is above every one of them. Can you see that? This universe that you and I today stand because of the word of his power. So you got to know what the word of God says. He's not a man that he should lie. If he says he will do this, he will do it for you. Now, the other one is a helmet of salvation. Another package that the enemy will bring is a package of you trying to question if you are born again or not, if you are saved or not. Remember Paul speaking to Timothy. He mentioned about two, two fellows. They went about telling people that the resurrection is already come and gone. And because of this, they overtook the faith of so many people, the Bible says. He will bring you the idea, are you sure you're born again? How are you sure? Do you have any evidence or any proof? If the rapture happens today, are you sure you're going to be lifted up? Are you going to be caught up in the air? Can you see how the lies, he's packaging this lie. Can you see that? But it is your own duty not to question your salvation. Because we are saved by grace through faith. So you're going to stand bold and say, that's what the Bible says. It is not because of my own merit or my own abilities or the things that I have done right. But it is a free gift from God. I am the righteousness of God. I am born again. I'm a new creature. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will see him. He will, he, he, he will fly from you. He will flee. Why? Because when you resist him, he will flee from you. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the last one is the sword of the spirit. Which is the offensive one. And in summary of this one is, it is written. The sword of the spirit, it is written. That's the fourth. That's, this is how Jesus Christ handled it in, in his, in his uh, temptation in the wilderness. Everything that Satan brought up, it is written. Jesus said, it is written. It is written. <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. It is written. So, you got to know. That's why I say the, 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 the most important thing is that you got to know the word of God. Because the soul of the spirit is the word of God. You got to know what the word of God says. So that however he comes to you, against you, you got to use the soul of the spirit. That double-edged sword against him. And he will have no place in you. But you will live every day. Not hoping that you will never get temptations or be in persecution at all. But you are living every day with the confidence that this thing shall come. But in the name of Jesus Christ, you are already more than a conqueror, a victor, a success, a wonder to this generation. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, I have come to the end of today's teaching. If you are listening to me right now, you are not yet born again. Or you are a member of the church, but you don't know if you're born again or not. For the simple reason that you don't understand what it means to be born again. Now, let me explain to you what it means to be born again. To be born again means that you put aside your goodness, your merits, your charitable works. Everything that you have done in the flesh. You put them aside. And now you come to Jesus Christ. 100% depending on him. You believe that he is the son of God. He died for your sins. God raised him up from the, de from the dead on the third day. And now personally you invite him to come into your life. And be your Lord and your Savior. And you begin a good new relationship with him. That's what it means to be born again. So if you have not done this, or maybe you were born again a long time ago, but you, you backslidden. 
You are no longer in fellowship with God, with Jesus Christ. Now is the opportunity for you to reconcile, to receive Jesus Christ today as your Lord and your Savior. Because there is no other way. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is saying, he says, no one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ talking to Nicodemus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is no other name given among men. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. So if you are listening to me today, your goodness, your personal behavior, your marriage, your pedigree, none of these things will save you. The Bible says all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the presence of God Almighty. He says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He says no one is righteous, not even one. That is why you got to lay aside whatever you think you've done right and come today under the ticket, the only one ticket available, that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. For Jesus Christ said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will eat with him and he will eat with me also. He's inviting you, but you are the one who's going to make this decision. Your friends cannot. They couldn't. What I said, I mean they couldn't. They could not. Your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, they could not. You are the only one who can make this choice. And you only can make this choice while you are still alive on earth. Once your spirit leaves your body, it becomes too late. So that's why today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Don't delay it any longer. Don't say, let me go get my acts together and then I'll come and get born again. No, but come as you are. Jesus Christ, once he recreates your spirit, then you will be able to do those good things that you, 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 you couldn't do on your own ability. I have not seen anyone who came as they were and he left them the same way they came. He will do something with you. He will change you. You will become a new creature. All things will pass away. Jesus Christ says, if you believe, if you believe God, if you don't believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Remember that the time is very short. The time is very short. If it was short 2,000 years ago, it's even shorter today. And every day it is estimated about 155,000 people die. Every day. Where did they go? Don't boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day might bring, the Bible tells us. It is a free gift. Remember that all you're doing is to receive what is already made available by faith. It is the grace of God. Jesus Christ already paid the price. He died for our sins. He was crucified. Our iniquities, our sins were laid upon him. He became sin for us. That we become the righteousness of God. So what are you going to, what, what do you got to lose? It's a free gift. You don't want to go to hell, friends, because hell is a real place. Remember, we live in the age of grace, where God is merciful right now, giving you a long time for you to repent. But there will come a day of judgment when his wrath will be poured out. When those who have rejected Jesus Christ while they are alive will be cast into a lake burning with fire and brimstone. It is a real place. It's not an imagination. It's not a metaphor. It is a real place. So I invite you, my friends. The Bible says, he that has no money, come buy and eat. It is a free thing. Come buy and eat without money. 
David said to Jonathan, there is only but one step between me and death. That statement, you can change it today and say, there is only but one step today between me and heaven. This is, and that step is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and receive him. Remember when Jesus Christ was crucified, he was crucified with two individuals who were guilty of whatever they did. That's why they were crucified. Both of them, they had equal opportunity to, to, get, to go to heaven that day. They have equal opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. But one of them did. Just one of them did. What happened to the other one? The opportunity was presented to them equally. But one took advantage of it. Don't be that one that says no. And then goes to hell. But be that one that takes advantage. That will take advantage today. Advantage of saying, Jesus Christ, I want you in my life. You are my Lord and my Savior. I receive you today with my whole heart. Come in and be my Lord and my Savior. Be that one that will say that. And if you happen to die now, after you say that prayer and meaning with all your heart, you will be in heaven. Spend eternity with God. Remember, a spirit, man is a spirit. And the spirit of a man will spend eternity somewhere. A spirit cannot die. But the Pope, the difference is, where is this spirit going to spend eternity? Is it in heaven or is it in hell? If it's the choice is left for you to make it. The Bible says he that believes in the Son of God has everlasting life. You see, everlasting life. But he that believes not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. You don't want to face the wrath of God. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn them out, Christ systems, systems, broken systems that cannot hold no water. Jesus Christ is the fountain of the living water. But there are people going about Seeking systems that cannot hold water. Broken systems. And God says they committed the evil. And the punishment for this evil is eternal hellfire. You don't want to commit this evil. Remember that we don't have to labor for the meat that perish. The Bible tells us. But we got to labor for that meat that endures for everlasting, everlasting meat. For eternity. He says, quit the son of man shall give unto you. What does he profit a man that he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? What can a man exchange for his soul? Vanity upon vanity, the scripture says all is vanity. In the twinkle of an eye, no matter how much you owe, you own in this world. No matter how rich you are, all of them will be dissolved. Because Peter tells us that the, this element will be dissolved with fervent heat. Everything in it will be dissolved, destroyed with fervent heat, with fire. But after that, what comes? My friends, think about it. So I'm going to now lead you in a prayer, a very short prayer. If you will pray this prayer with all your heart. Right now. You become born again. And if you will die, you will go to heaven and be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. You raised him up from the, de from the dead on the third day. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe now I am born again by faith. I am a child of God. My sins are washed away. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And Father God, I give you all the glory for this. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. My friends, if you pray that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God. You are now a Christian. There is another experience subsequent to salvation, which is infilling of the Holy Spirit, evidenced by speaking with other tongues. If you go to my archive on YouTube, Simple Truth Gospel with Kyrian. 
you will find a teaching titled Speaking in Tongues is for Every Believer. It will help you with this experience. Filled with the Spirit of God and speak with other tongues. Remember that now you are born again, you are a baby Christian. Just like in the natural. Babies that are born need to grow up. So, the only way to do it is to put your nose in the Word of God. Find a good church where they teach the Word of God. Buy a Bible and study the Word of God. Because faith will come by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Peter says, desire the sincere make of the Word of God that you may grow by. And he wants you to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that he can multiply in grace. I want to use this opportunity to thank all our partners all over the world. Those that are helping us spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. At no cost to other people. The soul winners. Those that are turning many to righteousness. If you want to become a partner of this ministry and help us even reach more people for the kingdom of God. I urge you to please visit our website www.kuim.org and there will be a donation button there where you can securely give to help us spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus Christ says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive that prophet's reward. Whatever you do for the kingdom of God, there are, you, you get double reward for it. Here while you are on earth, while you are still alive, and the life that is yet to come. Double reward. Remember, it is only those who hear the word of God and put them in practice. They are the ones that will get the full benefits of the word of God. And I forgot to say this earlier, in my iCarve on YouTube, or if you go to our website, uh, www.kuim.org, there is another teaching that is uh, similar to this teaching titled, Fight the Good Fight of Faith. Lay hold of that teaching cell. Lay hold of that teaching. That teaching and the one that you had today, they complement each other. And you will get even more out of today's teaching. Surely there is an end and your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Karamadia Sura Kangaroo this day. Alama England dem unu busko buruko to buske buku pa ekelete sangla ademasku produsto. Vuse ede ban angra dese ila agradasta sha ungoro to buduku ski parute. England dem tip.